Next thing, I'm going to all the guys I can take off, take this sprocket off here. Pulling this uh, primary tensioner out, pull this bolt out, make sure you pick this bushing out with it or it could fall in an oil pan which would be a head to lay a rag down in the oil pan area keep parts from falling down in there we're going to have to drain the oil anyway because the antifreeze is going to end up down there when we'll pull a water pump and clean them up clean the holes up and I'll be applying blue loctite to these I've heard of instances of these coming loose. I haven't had it happen, but then again, I locked tight them. Want some slack in the chain now. That bolt to go, and one there is in the way of the chain. Drain the wheel out of this and shove some rags and probably some plastic to try to minimize the sand and freeze going down the oil pan. Take about all the bolts out of the water pump. Six of a minute. That's a flood. And I got a drain pan underneath there catching most of this. See this? I'm holding the shaft. The impeller is spinning. Nice. Watch that baby turn inside of that. He feels kind of splined inside. It's gripping the splines a little bit, but it definitely won't circulate water. Ain't that a sight. That will do it. I wonder if it come off of there, but I guess not. Yeah, it sucks. That's our problem. Sure is a hell of a job to go through to get to a water pump. But uh, that'll straighten him up. This is a new replacement water pump. Got a cast iron impeller on it now. Took I kind of went over this with some 400 grit sandpaper and some uh, carburetor cleaner to break the tar up from the old gasket. Kind of get that top a little more. And I took an air hose and blew out all those holes. A couple weep holes and some hold down bolt holes. I took an antifreeze tester and drawed off some of the extra antifreeze from each cylinder bank so it wouldn't be running out while I'm installing stuff. So it won't get on your installation. Well, it is a mess. That's torque. 10 millimeter bolts, six of them to 105 inch pounds. 
I went ahead and stuck the outside bolts through their holes, including this guide bolt, just to make sure everything's lined up. Didn't want to have to take them all back loose because one of the who to put the timing cover on and one of these bolts won't go through it. But it lined up good, so now it'll be just a matter of putting the chain back in it, lining up the timing works. With these uh, double plated copper link lays on the camshaft timing mark that the arrow is pointing to. Then a single plate lines up with this sprocket when it's on there. And a single plate lines up with this line. And it's kind of tricky. You got to make sure you get it on that. If it's off by one tooth, this car will not start unless you unplug the cam sensor, and you really don't want it starting and being off a tooth, but it will start if you unplug this cam sensor. And you know you got it out of time, you have to take a whole mess back apart and move it one tooth, and that's, that's not going to be fun. I sprayed the oil pan and all of this area out with brake cleaner behind the oil pump, which is it there. And all the sides and the oil pan was actually sludged up on this thing. I got most of the sludge out of it. And then I poured, I don't know, a fourth of a quarter motor oil to it to pack any debris out. And there's a green pan underneath catching everything. Okay, I'm going to install the guides. I got quite a bit of wear on them. We should have them new guides put in but this is an economy job and that's where the chain gets oiled from this slit the tensioner plunger has an oil jacket in it and it shoots oil out this and oils the whole chain from that area I want to start fishing the chain back down around the driver's camshaft sprocket and let it go back around the crankshaft first one I want to stick in is this inside above the water pump driver's side which is this one which has a long bolt goes through the water pump and a short one goes into the engine block go in through the bottom Slide it in front of the chain beside the water pump and slide it up up the chain toward the cam sprocket. Lines up with the hole in the water pump. Tighten down to 250 inch pounds. And one guide's installed. I'll put this long one in. Up the driver's side against the outer edge of the front of the block. Feed it in through the bottom. It has an access hole on it. And it takes a long bolt. And it has another long bolt in the bottom. The timing chain marks the double copper links. They're right in line with that point on the sprocket. Right in the middle of it. 
mount this other guy before I pull that chain up through there or it's going to get too crowded. One long bolt, one short bolt. Get that down there to the water pump. Get started. I had to set the torque on that. That one's set. Okay. Some brake cleaner. And wash these bolt holes out. And wash the cam bolts off. Cam sprocket bolts. Yeah, the factories put Loctite on this, these ones. They didn't used to. I'll take some blue Loctite. Don't want that sprocket coming loose. Not on my watch. Okay, they're Loctited up. Pull a chain up through here. I'm gonna see if that marks a little bit. It'll be a bad day. No. Looks like it's there. Oh, the chain should be on the water pump. <coughs> through that guide. And this timing mark should line up with this link plate copper plate this should be tight between these two cams and it is Slack over here. This copper plate should be in line with the timing was. Seems like a little bit of slack in it. I'm go ahead and snug his sprocket down. It actually has a square socket in the center of the cam. hold it in place while you're doing stuff to it. However reliable that is. Get them kind of snug down and take the slack out of that chain in case it moves or something. I don't want the crank unlatched. primary tensioner in there. Just stuck the primary tensioner arm in there. It takes a slack up in the chain. And we'll roll the crank a little bit. It takes a slack out of the whole right side. What I call the leading edge of the chain. I need to stick something down in under that tensioner to keep tension on that tensioner arm. Like a hammer handle. Good prop. The guides and the cam gear bolts all get 250 inch pounds of torque and the tensioner arm. Alright, there's a deal. It's a nut with a screw sticking through it. The screw's protruding about no more than an eighth of an inch. A washer on top of it for a spacer. And this is for bleeding this tensioner out. 
that on top of it. Just kind of pump the oil out again. Now, the idea is to get this plunger so there's about that much of it sticking up out of this base. If you go too far, it'll get jammed and you'll be buying a new one for $200, which it should have a new one anyway offhand. I'm going to wipe some of the carbon off of it so I don't get... This sucker's probably about wore out anyway. To reset this when it's installed, you push on the tensioner arm and then it snaps out and takes up the slack. Then it'll start up the chain will rattle until it fills this full of oil through this back ball bearing. And always make sure that ball bearing's centered in that hole. If it gets dislodged, you want to replace this. I think there's some kind of little cage in there and it's pretty delicate if you get the if you put too long of a screw up to it, you'll dislodge that, that cage and it's real, it won't, when you shut it off, the oil will drain out of it and every time you stir it up, the chain will rattle and it gets enough slack in it, you'll ruin your motor because it, it won't be able to stay, uh, keep the, now this check, just to check to make sure that's down far enough, I'll put a mark here. I'm going to compress this a little farther real quick and see if it snaps back out. I think I'll measure that just for future reference. Push down to it's in. That's a half inch. It might be close enough for me to click it and see what happens. Aha! Put it back on my mark. Half inch. And I think that's where I want to be at. And then I'll stick it in there. All I have to do is snap that tensioner against it and it'll spring out just like it did. And the bowl's intact. So I'm in business. The o ring's damaged, probably from original insulation. Got a nick in it right there. So I've got an O-ring hanging around here just for these things. You know, all the time the marks are aligned. Stick this back in there and flip this tension arm against it and it'll pop out. And check this O-ring and this cap. That's still stick to, stuck up, it'll work. These 10 millimeters torque to 105 inch pounds too. 